All right, I'm gonna slowly move this rock out of the way and see if I can get him up close for the cameras. Here we go. Ah! Oh. Ah! Look at that pincher. Oh, he's trying to get me. I'm gonna let go of that arm right there. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Can you show me the top side of him? Ah! Whoa! As the morning sun rose above the horizon, I sat and watched as the tide slowly began to recede. One wave at a time, the shoreline gradually exposed itself, revealing a slippery obstacle course of rocky terrain. Welcome to the Pacific side of Costa Rica, where if you arrive at low tide and know the right places to search, the ecosystem is alive with sea creatures. Check this out. Looks like I'm sitting at the edge of a river but this is in fact the tide going back out into the ocean. Now I know you guys often wonder, how do you find the creatures in beyond the tide? We wait for the tide to go out and then we backtrack into the small tidal pools and that's where you find animals that are stranded. All right, let's head up this way and see what we can find. My favorite thing about ocean tide pools is that you never know what you are going to come across. And our first discovery of the day was one of the strangest creatures we have ever stumbled upon. Oh my gosh, look at how big it is. Wait a second. Oh, what is that? That is an animal. That is a zebra worm right there. It is alive. I can feel it contracting. Look, now it looks more like a worm. That is a huge worm. Is that as big as they get? Uh, they get bigger than that, and they can stretch up to 50 times in length. Look at that. Look at how far that thing stretches out. It just keeps going. I feel like it's going to break. It's, it's getting so even bigger. Look at that. Whoa. <laughs> wow. OK. Oh, all right, I'm putting this guy back under his rock. Moving carefully down the shoreline, our goal was to track the receding tide so that we could stay as close to the ocean as possible. These freshly exposed pools are generally cooler in temperature, which in turn increases the chances of finding sea life. And it wasn't long before we had our next animal encounter. Oh, wow. Look at this pocket of water is completely filled with little slugs. And you know what these are? These are warty sea cats. It'd be a lot easier for you to see them if I get some water in this plastic container. Now, we've shown you guys the black sea hare and the brown sea hare, and this is also a variety of sea slug, but they're a little bit different. Oh, they're everywhere. They're like on the sides of the rocks. Come on, guys, I'm just gonna collect you up and put you in this container. Whoa. That's a lot of slugs. That is a container of slugs. You see how quickly I was able to collect them. There are probably about 60 or 70 of them right in this pocket. And look at that. You can see them so much better now that they're in this clear container. But they're unbelievably camouflaged on this algae. And that's actually what they are feeding on. Now, similar to the brown sea hare and the black sea hare, they also have rhinophores, which are those little appendages that are growing up off of the top of their heads and right up front on their mouths. Now, the ones on top sense light and movement, and the ones on the front of the face sense chemicals in the environment, specifically food, and it also helps them to communicate with each other. Now you may be wondering to yourself, do these creatures have skeletons? No, they do not. Slugs are actually gastropods, which means that they have a shell that protects their organs. Now, something like a snail has an external shell, but slugs like this, or the brown sea hare, the black sea hare, have an internal shell, and I can actually feel that in there. It feels like a little pebble and that is where all of its major organs are being kept. Ooh, look at the bottom of it. That's its foot right there. It has a big muscle that helps it slink along on the basin of the tide pool. And up front, it does have a scratchy little tongue called a radula, and that's what they're using to almost vacuum cleaner up all of this algae. Now, all I have to do is massage the slug a little bit, and it's getting extremely slimy and very gummy. Wow, oh, it's unbelievably sticky. And the more I handle it, the more it secretes this mucus. Now, it doesn't injure the animal in any way to do this. That's actually helping keep its body moist. And of course, it's thinking, uh-oh, am I going to be eaten? If so, that mucus is slightly toxic. It's not gonna harm me at all. But look at that, how the slug just slinks along in my hand. 
I didn't think we were going to come across a slug when we were out here in Costa Rica, but sure enough, no matter where you go, we're always coming across slugs. All right, let's keep heading this way and see what else we can find. What are you seeing there, coyote? A pretty angry looking crab. Look at how he's wedged his body into this rock. He's defending himself with that pincher. Look at that. All right, I'm going to slowly move this rock out of the way and see if I can get him up close for the cameras. Here we go. Ah! Ah! Look at that pincher. Now the pinchers on the front of this crab are pretty serious. You can see that's a monster pincher. This may be some variety of stone crab. Oh, oh, he's trying to get me. I'm gonna let go of that arm right there. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Can you show me the top side of it? Ah! Oh, he got me good. Look at that. Look at my finger. He just crunched the top of my finger. That really hurt. Oh my gosh. Oh, that puts the purple shore crab to shame. <sighs> I think at this juncture, he has definitely earned the right to be defended in that corner. My finger is bleeding. Let's just move on and see what else we can find here in these Costa Rican tide pools. Ouch. This is perfect. Where? What do you see? All of this right in here. Now, all these rocks are very flippable. I have a feeling if we start flipping some, we're going to find exactly what it is that we've been looking for. Okay, this could be a great rock right here. You can see that it's slightly above the water, yet a lot of it's under. Now, creatures want to stay in the shade where it's cooler. A lot of crevices up underneath this. I'm going to flip it and let's see what's under it. You ready? Yep. Oh, yes! Oh, right there. All right, hold on. Whoa. Whoa! You know what those are? They look like hairy octopus. They do. Oh, you think I should pick it up? I don't know. <laughs> Looks like it's probably dangerous with all of those spines on the tentacles, but these are, in fact, brittle stars. Whoa. This is actually one of the most common tide pool species you will find. Over 2,000 species of these worldwide, and they can be found in every single ocean system. Even the North and South Pole, those frigid waters are home to brittle stars. And you may be thinking to yourself, well, it kind of looks like a caterpillar that has a bunch of spikes on it. Is this venomous? Is it poisonous? Coyote, are you in any sort of danger right now? Actually, the brittle star is completely harmless. Now, on the underside, they have little tiny tube feet, very similar to a sea star. Now, they're not sea stars. No, but they are related to sea stars. And right there in the middle, that's its mouth. But not only is that its mouth, it's also its butt. They Ooh. eat and excrete their waste from the exact same hole. Now, the jaws of this creature are very unique. It actually has five jaws, kind of like my fingers there. Chomp, 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 chomp. And as they're moving across the basin of the tide pool, they're feasting on all sorts of algae and decomposing plant matter. And when the tide is going out like this, these creatures can actually move rather quickly. Watch this, Mark. I'll put it right here in the algae and watch it move. Really cool the way that they can just kind of adhere to the environment and then slink down in between the rocks. Now let's talk about the appendages of this creature. You see all of these bristles that run down the length of the tentacles. Those are actually used in locomotion and you can see they completely surround the tentacle, which allows this creature to be very ambidextrous as it moves through the tide pool environment. Now, this creature is capable of losing all except for one of its legs. Now, a sea star can lose all of its legs and both species do regenerate their limbs, but this guy, as long as he's got one leg, he's gonna be just fine. Well, between the crab, the slugs, and this brittle star, I would definitely say that we have come across some bizarre creatures here in the Costa Rican tide pools. I'm Coyote Peterson. Be brave. Stay wild. We'll see you on the next adventure. All right, buddy. Back under the rocks you go. Woo! That was cool. If you thought these Costa Rican tide pool creatures were fascinating, make sure to go back and watch the first episode of Beyond the Tide, where we get up close with a deadly sea snake. And don't forget, subscribe so you can join me and the crew on our next aquatic adventure. 
Oh, cool. Check this out. We got a little cove. This could be a perfect spot to find creatures. Come on up. Ooh, it's slippery. You good? Yeah, watch your footing. Oh, All right. Just going down in there. Oh, there's an eel. 